So when building a specialized corpus, um, let's look at the, um, the tasks. Uh, you have collected, let, let's say that you have already collected the texts uh, and now comes uh, some technical pre-processing. You will very likely need to convert those texts into a common format and encoding. Usually that would be TXT and UTF-8 encoding, but that again depends on the tools that you're going to use. Uh, and then you will decide on the levels of annotation, uh, again depending on the tools uh, that you have at your disposal for the languages uh, included in your project. Um, if your corpus is multilingual and parallel, uh, you will need to perform alignment. Alignment is best performed either using CAD tools, but most of them are commercial, uh, like SDL or MemoQ, or alternatively, you can use the LF aligner, uh, which is free, but uh, slightly more complicated to use. Um, to search the corpus, there are a number of tools available. Uh, there is a very, very simple but um, still quite useful tool, AntCong, uh, which is free. It exists in the Windows and Mac uh, version. Uh, of course, uh, its functionalities are not as broad as uh, those of some commercial uh, products. Uh, but AntConc is still uh, quite useful, uh, at least for this initial checking of your text collection and testing the corpus. Then, uh, if we're speaking of um, offline uh, tools uh, locally installed at your, at, your, at your computer, there is Wordsmith. Uh, and uh, Paraconc, which is um, uh, the tool of choice if you want to uh, query parallel texts. Um, it is important to note that Paraconc offers no alignment functionality, so your texts have to be pre-aligned if you want to use parallel concordancing, concordancing with Paraconc. Um, in the remainder of this course, we shall be using the Sketch Engine. Sketch Engine is not free, uh, but there uh, are quite flexible uh, licenses that you can obtain. And for uh, students of this course, uh, licenses for Sketch Engine are provided within this course. So you, you will be able to work with it. Um, but before we get to that, uh, once your texts are compiled and um, uh, before you move on to the final term extraction um, you know, steps, it is good to check uh, using one of the tools that I've mentioned before. It's a good idea to check uh, whether your corpus um, roughly corresponds with your initial plans and with your um, project. Uh, and there are some ideas how to do it. So you can use AntConc, for example, to make a word list and check the frequencies of the terms that you sh think should be key uh, for your domain. Even if you are not an expert in the domain, you will very likely, you already very likely have an idea which are the key terms. So you can check, they should come up uh, a very uh, frequent or on top of your frequency list. Um, for example, here I was compiling a corpus for Christology, uh, yet my word list uh, shows up cave and caves as two most frequent items and karst comes only third. Um, so uh, on the basis of this word list I can decide, okay, uh, there is too much uh, speleology, too much uh, uh, cave uh, science in uh, my corpus. Another thing is that you should check for items which may disrupt your terminology research, such as corpus noise. For example, this is a list uh, that uh, was produced when I was building a corpus of music theory using only texts on the internet. Uh, and this initial word list shows Probably, um, first of all, it shows that my corpus is too, too small. If you look at those frequencies, they are pretty low. Uh, and on the other hand, having uh, uh, items such as this following post uh, types and attachment on top of my list 
Uh, whereas the corpus is supposed to represent music theory, this probably means that uh, my websites or my texts were noisy uh, and there is uh, some lexical inventory that uh, I do not want. Uh, so I will have to either uh, clean my texts or use fewer uh, internet resources. Um, another thing is that if your aim is um, good coverage of the domain, you should consider uh, other sources, not just the internet. So um, just the internet is usually skewed or biased. Uh, certain uh, genres and certain text types simply don't occur on the internet as frequently as they should. Um, on the other hand, uh, if uh, the goal of your uh, entire project is to explore term variation, uh, you should aim, of course, for a large uh, variety, for a range, uh, for a broad range of different authors, uh, genres, uh, different text sources, uh, so that uh, your um, results will reflect uh, the variety across um, the entire range.